Thought Bubble Audio. I'm Tim. And I'm Frank. And you're listening to The Gospel According to Lucas, where the Force meets Catholicism. In each episode, we'll analyze scripture through the lens of Star Wars to uncover the Christian influence on a galaxy far, far away. If you'd like to read along with us, you can find a link to today's readings in the show notes at thegospelaccordingtolucas.com or right in your podcast app. We're using the New American Bible Revised Edition. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing for free to The Gospel According to Lucas in your favorite podcast app. Visit the gospel according to lucas.com for links to subscribe. And finally, if you like what we do, please consider making a donation at patreon.com slash thought bubble audio. Today, we will be discussing the gospel reading for the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them, so they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. A couple episodes ago, I, I spoke of the the people who are just there witnessing these things. And they, they you know, they're just like, so you're just going to leave Zebedee, huh? You're just going to, you know, we've got some, got some nets. All right. All right, cool. See yeah, you. just let an old See man ya. do the fishing alone. All right, cool. That's right. And what is so what I what I uh, what I love about this gospel um, is that Jesus calls Simon, Andrew, James and John and they abandon their whole lives like these people watch them do it like they leave their families, they leave their jobs. And it's beautifully simplistic in its message It says, whatever it is that you are doing is not nearly as important as what God asks of you. Right. And and those other people who stay behind, this is not my line. I've heard somebody say it before um, in in a homily uh, and it's uh, um, said they weren't ready to hear. That's what's so when they weren't ready to they weren't ready to listen to the call. In Star Wars, we see that call many times, but there is usually a hesitation. Unlike that of these four disciples. Qui-Gon Jinn calls on Anakin to become a Jedi who nearly stays on Tatooine after running back to Shmi Skywalker, his mom. Princess Leia calls on Obi-Wan, who is the rebellion's, quote, only hope, only to muse that he's too old for this sort of thing. Obi-Wan calls on Luke to learn the ways of the Force to accompany him to Alderaan. It is only with the death of Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru that Luke sees the importance of Obi-Wan's call, I want to become I want to come with you and learn the ways of the force and become a Jedi like my father. Parentheses, like Qui-Gon Jinn asked my father to do on this very planet, you know, however many years ago. Han Solo is also known for resisting the call entirely in his venture with Luke and Obi-Wan to be well paid. However, even Han cannot resist the call to join the rebellion, as so many do. The list goes on. In Star Wars, Mon Mothra calls the rebel cells to become an alliance in Rebels. Many are called to act upon in service to Grogu in The Mandalorian. The Force itself calls out to Finn and Janna, uh, Jaina and other stormtroopers, which breaks their First Order conditioning in The Force Awakens. Um, Ray calls to, and Rise of Skywalker. Um, Ray calls to Luke to return to the Resistance in The Last Jedi. And finally, the Resistance calls on the whole friggin' galaxy to stop Palpatine's final order in The Rise of Skywalker. Though many of these calls are met with hesitation, unlike that of the disciples, everyone is summoned in the name of goodness and self-sacrifice. And because of that, 
we repeatedly see that the will of the force is more important than anything that they're doing. When the call is made for selfish reasons, it fails. Palpatine calls on Anakin to the dark side with the promise of selfish gains, only to see himself flung down into the bowels of the Death Star. Luke Skywalker resists that same call, staying true to the light and helping his father regain his goodness. But it's also worth noting that because Darth Vader made the decision to take the wrong call, it ended in his death. Supreme Leader Snoke calls Ben Solo to the dark side only to be sliced in two by his apprentice. Um, Rey resists the call of Palpatine like Luke and, and again ends terribly for the Emperor and for Ben Solo who, like his grandfather, took the wrong call. The call to goodness to act triumphs over the dark side because it is in the service of love, the supreme force that guides the universe. The disciples seem to understand this immediately. How lucky are they to have delighted in that simplicity? Our call may not be so easy, but we should heed the words of so many Jedi Masters to quiet our minds and to listen to the will of the Force. Nice. Not very nicely done. Um, I You said a few things that I, I uh, really, really latched onto. Right there at the end, though, you talked about love being the force that that guides the universe pun semi intended i mm -hmm. i'm sure and uh and that's really really true and and you know on the face of it like you know lo love is the is the force that 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 binds everything together in in our in our universe in our world on the face of it that can sound maybe a little sort of does that fit in a in a christian in there? like is it just love and love alone well yes because god is love God is love. God is the force that binds everything together. So love is the force because God is is love. It is the supreme force. He is the supreme being and the supreme force. Um, God so, actually is all around. That, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God is all around me. Um, yeah, totally. And, and I also liked what you said about not being ready to hear the call. You know, how some are not... Are not ready because even Jesus says that, right? Like this is a hard saying. He says that I don't know. Maybe it's when he says like leave your, you know, leave your families behind or, or and and come mm -hmm. follow me. But I think I think it's when he says that. It's like this is going to be hard for people to hear. This is going to be hard to, to to hear and and to live. Um, or, or or even when he talks to the rich young man and says you know like then then leave everything you have and come follow me. It's it's hard and and some people are not ready. Um. At the time when when they hear the call, but we've seen countless times throughout Scripture where someone is not ready, and the call keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming, and then they're ready and they they heed mm -hmm. the call. Um, so I like I like a lot what, what you did there. That was that was really really nice and and really so many examples of people heeding the call throughout Star Wars. You went through a, a nice a nice selection of them there. Like Mon Mothma is one that I, I wouldn't have thought of uh, right away, and I I love I love the way you tie that that in. Yeah, there's there are just so many times where we see this time after time after time, and it's like a chain reaction of like this person hears the call of this person, who then hears the call of this person. You know, it, from from Leia to Obi Wan. Uh, and then Obi Wan calls upon Luke, and then Luke calls upon Ray. You know, like it just sort of it, it cascades down through the generations, um, and it's almost like a, I'm now I'm putting on my my Thomist hat, my Saint Thomas Aquinas hat, and it's like if you trace back that chain of calls, you know, all the way to the beginning, you get back to Adam and Eve and and, and God. You get back to the existence of God by tra tra tracing God called it. called to Adam in the garden. Exactly. Right? Yeah, you're right, exactly. You're right. Yeah, there's a there's a direct lineage of calling, um, and you know, and of course we we you know we we take, you know, Adam, you know, the Garden of Eden, we take that as a story, right, and not and not literal and not literal history, but that that you know, Star Wars not literal history either, right, you know, and so, but it still serves that yeah. principled message of understanding what it means to to be called exactly. Um, it's still the inspired word of God, and it's still no less true, even if it's not a historical retelling. That's right. That's right. Um, and I, I'm just thinking of like other like calls. I love the call. I think that's what I think. I I I I. It's some of my favorite gospel readings and stories, 
just stories in general, like the hero, just the hero's journey, exactly. the call to action, the call to adventure. I love the idea of like laying down what you're doing because shut up, it's actually not that important. And just going and doing the thing you're supposed to do. And you could take that as small as we're podcasting right now and I have to go clean the garage you know, mm. or whatever, you know, just like what, you know, like what is it that is so important that you cannot answer? You cannot answer the call. You know, we talk about, we talked about Adam and Eve, but you could like, you talk about Moses that way, you know, you know, Moses, Moses, you know, here mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. Here I am Lord. Right. You know that, you know, um, you know, is it I that you're calling? No, it can't be me. The hesitation of, of the call and knowing, but, going and doing it anyway you don't have to be perfect to answer the call mm. um and you don't even have to have the answers to why you're answering and I, I think that's um that's wonderful amen so when somebody when you pick up the phone you might not always know who's calling the number could be blocked but you still answer the phone you know maybe i don't <laughs> <laughs> unknown number. <laughs> unknown number i'm not answering i'm not answering that screen that call yeah i'll call back yeah so um well, Frank, anyway, thank you for thank you for uh, being here. Everyone listening, thank you also for being here. Know that we are praying for you. We hope that you pray for us. Um, the Lord knows we need it. And, um, and God bless, and may the force be with you.